Yo, somebody said, why'd you buy the BNT APC9 when you can get the high power Strybog or CZ Scorpion for half the price? Then somebody asked me, why'd you get the APC9 when you can get another PCC and a load of ammo? And another person said, if you get the APC9, you gotta get a Trigicon optic. YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Greyman47 back with another video. Hey, as you guys saw on the thumbnail and the title, I got the BNT APC9 out here on the range for the first time. I'm actually gonna shoot it. Uh, a little while ago, I did a video was, which was the unboxing of the gun and I brought it out, showed you what you got with it when it came stock from the dealership. And today I'm gonna show you what it looks like now compared to what it looked like then. All right, so let's get into it. All right, y'all, so with the BNT here, um, I got a few things that um, I added to it to make it a little bit more functional and make it look better. All right, so I'm gonna start giving you guys the lowdown on the gun. First, when you first buy the gun stock, like I said in the other video, it comes with flip-up sights, polymer flip-up sights that are very sturdy, uh, very similar to Magpul, you know, your Magpul flip-up sights as well. And if you notice here, there is a Picatinny rail all across the front so that you can mount other things like an optic as well. Actually here, I, I decided to mount a Swamp Fox um, King Slayer. And some of y'all might say, man, you gotta get a Trigicon on there. Something that's, that's a Trigicon or, um, you know, one of the high end uh, optics. One that probably costs you as much as a small car. And so I disagree with that. I think if you get, there are a lot of good optics out there. If you get something that's mid range in terms of price and is good quality, Go ahead and do that, especially if you're not kicking down doors for a living or running special ops. Uh, you don't need those high end uh, optics and, and lights and things like that. This is something that's going to serve me well for personal protection or home defense. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be banging this up. I'm not going to be crawling through mud or anything like that. So this Swamp Fox King Slayer is what I chose. And the reason I picked this one is because I bought the Swamp Fox Sentinel for one of my other guns for the um, Canic TP9. I love that gun, or that optic. It is definitely rugged uh, and does a, a really good job. So I want to check this out. I'm going to do a full review on this optic a little bit later as well. Some of y'all might say, man, that's a small optic for this gun. Part of what I was trying to do is keep this gun as small as possible, make it easy to transport, easy to throw into a backpack. Um, so I wanted to keep it small and get an optic that wasn't too large. Uh, I didn't even want to go with like a Romeo 5 or anything like that just because it's a little bit too big. And I can also put this on a riser a little bit later. Um, I did have a chance to sight this optic in, so I did get a chance to shoot it. And so when I put it up and acquire the optic, I can pick up the dot as quickly as possible. Not a problem for me at all, but we'll see. Maybe I end up putting a, a riser on it. Some of y'all might say it's blocking your backup sights. And in fact, it really isn't. Um, it's low enough that it actually is right below the ring and post on this site. So I can see right over top it, uh, right over top of the optic. So if this Swamp Fox were to fail on me or the battery would die, I can flip these up and see right over top of it as backup sights. So that's not an issue for me. And at the same time, it keeps it nice and compact as well. Also, um, this gun, and I said it on the other video, but this gun comes with Picatinny rails uh, at the nine o'clock and six o'clock and three o'clock locations. The three o'clock and the nine o'clock locations are both removable with the screws underneath. You got a couple um, M-lock slots so you can throw M-lock attachments on there. And again, that's at the nine and six or nine and three o'clock position. At the six o'clock position, those are fixed. You cannot remove that um, rail system there. It is fixed. All right, another nice thing I like about this gun is that it has ambi charging handle here. It is the folding ambi charging handle and it is a non-reciprocating charging handle. The older ones were reciprocating and it just had one uh, charging handle that was fixed, that stuck out. But this is the newer model, the Pro, the Pro G actually, and it does have the flip, uh, flip up and flip out um, charging handles or folding charging handles, which is really nice. All right, also in addition to that, 
I do have the G model, like I said, which means that it has the Glock lower and this gun is safe. It was checked, no rounds in the magazine. It was checked prior to filming, but it has the Glock lower. The nice thing about the Glock lower is you can switch in and out if you have a double stack Glock, like a Glock 17 or 19, you can switch in and out uh, and run the same magazines if you're using it for a backup gun. Um, so that's pretty cool too. This is the longer stack magazine here. Uh, so the Glock, having a Glock lower is nicer. And as some of you guys know, those proprietary BNT magazines are known to, to shatter once they drop from the magazine, especially if the magazine is full. And these uh, Glock magazines are, you know, those things are, are sturdy. They, uh, they're made to bang up. So I think that makes it a little bit better as well. It also has an ambi uh, bolt release here, one on the left side, one on the right side. Um, so those things are ambi. The uh, magazine release is also ambi as well. And you can see it's a little smaller on the left side than it is with the big paddle on the right side. So easy to get to as well. The one thing that I did not change yet that I still don't like about this is the safety. It's polymer um, and it feels like a cheaper polymer and it's kind of gritty and it's also ambi as well. If you've seen any of my videos on ARs, you know I don't care for ambi um, AR style safety switches just because they kind of get in the way whenever I'm switching with my fingers usually up here. And when I go to, to switch it on the left side, my finger sometimes gets in the way and I gotta intentionally move it out. So not happy with that. I'm still gonna change that out. Also, I put a light on this pistol as well. And I have the same light on my CZ Scorpion. And this is an O-Light. Again, you don't have to get Surefire and pay Surefire prices. If I was on a SWAT team or running special ops, I'd probably go with the Surefire just because it's tried and true and can be beat, just beat the hell out of. Uh, these O-Lights are gonna do just fine or a Streamlight or anything like that. They're gonna do just fine for home and self-defense. And then the next thing I put on here is a Magpul grip. And I think it's called the Magpul M-I-A-D. Um, grip kit and the nice thing about this is the first time I ever used this particular kit it has underneath a uh, door that you can store batteries there's actually a little uh, oil bottle that they have in there for you uh, as it comes from the factory but the nice thing about this grip is it allows you to change the back strap out it also lets you change out this little piece right here um, this little finger groove on the grip as well. You can take this piece out and that finger groove will not be there. It's for those of you that don't like finger grooves, it will be completely straight. So I do like this grip a lot over the stock grip that came with the BNT. All right, so also in addition to that, last thing that I added to this is a brace. And this is a A3 tactical brace, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a folding um, brace. And the nice thing about it is it locks I guess it's a nice thing and some people think it's a flaw, but it locks both ways. So once it's folded like this, it's locked. In order to open it up, you have to press this button here and then open it up and then it locks this way. I can just press that, sling it back and I'm ready. So I'll show you that again. So if I pull it out, sling it back and I'm ready. So it's not too bad once you get a, a t you know, some time in, in terms of deploying it. Last thing on this, uh, is there is a quick detach um, connector right here on the bottom of this brace. Once I went in the dealership and actually picked up this gun for the first time, I was blown away just by the fit and fit, the fit and finish and the feel of this gun, and I had to buy it. I mean, it was that simple for me. I just had to buy it to test it out. And at some point, I'm still going to run this gun side by side with the Strybog and see which one I like better, running them one at, you know, side by side. So let's throw some rounds down range, y'all. Let's get it. Uh, this um, Kingslayer has a 3 MOA um, center dot and then a 65 MOA uh, circle around that dot. So uh, it is easy to pick up in the daylight. I'm about eight yards from the target and I'm gonna uh, focus on the one that's the top left circle. So let's give it a shot.
right, not too bad of a group. I did fly a couple here to the left. Um, I think I keyhole this one in the center maybe one or two times, and uh, the rest are pretty close, so not too bad. Like I said, only eight yards, uh, but this is the first real time other than sighting this in um, that I actually shot this gun. So let's shoot a little bit more and I'll talk about it. All right, y'all, so I'm about 15 yards, uh, maybe 13 to 15 yards from the target, and now I'm gonna focus on the upper right target. Uh, so let's see how it does. All right, last round open. Let's check it out. All right, so you can see I'm dropping them a little bit to the little bit low and left. So I probably need to recite this in a little bit better. Um, and also just kind of get some more rounds uh, practice with this gun itself. But uh, not too bad of a group. I guess if this were a center mass and I was defending my home or defending myself, um, I would definitely hit the target easily. Uh, but I like to be a little bit closer, a little bit more into that center ring. All right, y'all, let's shoot it some more. All right, y'all, so I got a 17 round uh, magazine in here from my Glock 17. So I got about five rounds in here. I'm gonna shoot it once it, the bolt locks open. I'll switch over to the larger magazine uh, just to kind of show you that easy transition. All right, so I'm also going to focus on the bottom left with these five, uh, the bottom left circle with these five rounds in this Glock 17 mag. And when I switch over to the right, um, bottom right circle. All right, let's go. Check it out. All right, so not so good here. You can see I flew those to the left. So I can see myself just kind of wobbling a little bit. Uh, I think I need some more practice. I was, as I was trying to acquire the gun, I was just wobbling, not able to stay steady as I, I need to be. So when I dropped that and switched over to the larger magazine, not that the magazine made any difference, but for whatever reason, I did a little bit better. I did fly a couple over here to the left. I think, again, I need to uh, practice a little bit more with this and also sight it in a little bit better. All right. All right, y'all. So this time before I was shooting just some basic um, round nose, um, you know, range ammo with brass. I got some hollow points here, some premium ammo, some spear gold dot, 124 grain uh, plus P's. I'm going to run plus P's through this and see uh, how it does or handles plus P's. So these are those hollow points, those spear gold dots, 124 grain plus peas. All right, let's get it. All right, y'all, so that is the BNT APC-9. Uh, a couple quick notes on this gun after I shot it for the first time. I gotta say, um, I really enjoyed shooting this gun and it did perform up to my expectations. I'm still saying that it shot, uh, it shoots just based off of what I shot today, shoots a heck of a lot smoother than the Strybog or the CZ Scorpion. So this might be a Strybog or CZ Scorpion killer. I know they say the Grasshopper Mouse is the CZ, or CZ Scorpion Killer, but I think this is the CZ Scorpion Killer as well as Strybog. So I'm really digging this gun. I'm gonna throw a lot more rounds down range with this gun over the next couple of uh, weeks and I'll do another video. And like I said earlier, I am going to shoot this side by side with the Strybog just to kind of compare these two at some point. All right, I, I gotta say that the recoil on this was so smooth even with the plus P rounds. I couldn't even really tell much difference between the plus P rounds and the original um, standard pressure rounds. So just an awesome, awesome gun. Um, is it worth the money? Right now I'm saying yeah. 
The next time I come back to you with an update on this, I might have a different perspective. But as of today, I'm saying, yeah, this is definitely worth the money, the fit and finish of it, the quality of it. Um, I do need to sight in my um, uh, King Slayer a little bit better so I can get some better groupings and just also practice with it a little bit more. But it is a smooth, smooth shooting gun. So if you got a chance to pick up one of these APC9 Pros and with the Glock lower, the G uh, model, I say go ahead and do that. And I do feel like even though I didn't shoot it with the other um, standard man manufacturer grip, I do feel like this Magpul grip really is ergonomic for me. Um, and also another thing I like about it is the ambi controls on this thing. Uh, really super, really good. Uh, just an all-around good gun. Nice PD, or, um, PCC uh, or PDW. You can throw it in a bag easily. Um, like I said, I'm trying to keep it low profile. That's why I went with a smaller uh, optic and I kept it off the rail. At this point, I don't see a need to put a rail on here, but uh, I might feel a little bit different later. All right, y'all. So that is the a or the BNT APC9 Pro uh, G model. Um, drop some lines down in that comment section. Tell me some experiences you've had with this gun. If you've compared it to the Strybog or anything else, make sure you do that. Uh, let me know. That's all I got for you today. All right, like I always say, folks, if you ain't packing, you're slacking. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.